Wow, 100 years. Hi, I'm Susan Service, and I was honored to serve as the executive director of the Mass Health Council for 27 years, over a quarter of a century. Yikes! I am thrilled to congratulate the Mass Health Council and happy 100th anniversary. I congratulate not only tonight's honorees, but the leadership and staff of the MHC for their continued commitment to improve and protect health. There's a lot of work to be done and they are up for the challenges. Please, throughout this broadcast, you can click on the donate button and help fund the future. Congratulations, MHC. Thank you all and have a great evening. Hi, my name is Hooky Garrett and I am honored and proud to be, have been the executive director of the Mass Health Council, 1966-1988, 22 years. I'm now 101, a year older than the organization. Congrats to it for the many steadfast accomplishments in public health over the century. Here's to a second hundred. Happy 100th birthday, Massachusetts Health Council. I'm Senate President Karen Spelka, and I'm absolutely thrilled to join this historic virtual celebration. I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to this evening's Champions of the Century honorees, former Governors Dukakis and Patrick, as well as First Ladies Kitty and Diane and a big congrats to the 2020 healthcare stars. I would also like to acknowledge Honorary Chair House Speaker DeLeo, and thank you for your partnership and leadership as we confront the challenges posed by this unprecedented public health crisis. As you know, the Senate has put healthcare front and center this session. And so I want to thank you all for your work in this area especially as cases rise and we move into the winter months. Given its start during another public health crisis 100 years ago, it seems fitting that amid another pandemic, we honor and highlight the Council's commitment to health equity and increasing access. Your work has been inspiring and has never been more important. These are challenging times, but I have no doubt that Massachusetts will pull through this stronger than ever before. So thank you for all that you do. And please stay healthy and be well. Thank you. I'm Senator Ed Markey, and I wish we were all together in person to celebrate this remarkable centennial event. But I'm so glad that we're able to join you all at this virtual gala. Uh, I'm thrilled to congratulate the Massachusetts Health Council on 100 years of truly critical work. The essential nature of public health has never been on clearer display to the people of Massachusetts than it is at this present moment. Uh, the Massachusetts Health Council uh, over the course of its history has endeavored to support health policy and programming in Massachusetts, uh, focusing on disease prevention and health promotion across the state. This organization was established a century ago during the tuberculosis pandemic and coincided with the Spanish flu that, by the way, my mother contracted and had the last rites in 1918. Now, during the time of this centennial celebration, the Massachusetts Health Council is using 100 years of public health knowledge to activate effectively in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, you are helping to protect the health of the people of Massachusetts. The value of your efforts is immeasurable. Uh, I would also like to congratulate our other incomparable leaders, Governor Mike Dukakis and Kitty Duke Caucus, Governor Deval Patrick and Diane Patrick on the well-deserved champions of the century. When you Google public health, their pictures 
come up uh, because they are receiving awards for their work across all the years on healthcare access and care. Shining a light on barriers to health access is crucial to ensuring the health and wellness of the people of this Commonwealth. For your work on these issues, we are all grateful. I would especially like to recognize Kitty and Diane for their strength and leadership and their willingness to share their own stories for the benefit of the community. Leaders like you are indispensable in promoting better public health. And congratulations uh, to Devin and Jason McCourty, who are being honored for their commitment to promoting sickle cell uh, uh, anemia awareness and for their work, highlighting the need to address inequities in healthcare access and treatment, particularly in communities of color. It is impossible to address public health without addressing inequity. On this day of celebration, I wanna recognize the Massachusetts Health Council for 100 years of unflinching dedication to the health and wellness of Massachusetts. On behalf of a grateful community and Commonwealth, I thank you for everything that you do. Uh, this is really something worth celebrating. Congratulations uh, to everyone who has contributed to this special, special moment uh, and the leadership of the Commonwealth uh, in public health over a century. Thank you and congratulations. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Maria Stefanos from WCVB Channel 5, Boston's news and community leader, and I'm so honored to welcome you to the Massachusetts Health Council's 100th anniversary, coming to you, obviously, virtually through the magic of Zoom. It's a whole new way for us to gather and stay in touch, which is so important. Here at WCVB, we are so proud to be a longtime sponsor of the great work done by the Mass Health Council. 100 years is a big deal for anyone, but as a leader in the greater healthcare community, this kind of sustainability and experience, as you know, is especially important this year during a pandemic that is the worst healthcare crisis we have faced, ironically, in more than 100 years, as well as the Spanish flu was almost exactly a century ago. Tonight's gathering is gonna be exciting, moving, educational, and yes, we promise fun. Tonight, the Massachusetts Health Council will present their annual awards to healthcare leaders from all across the Commonwealth who continue to help make us the healthiest state in the nation, including an exclusive visit with the champions of the century, Governors Mike Dukakis and Deval Patrick, alongside former First Ladies Kitty Dukakis and Diane Patrick, both champions of healthcare causes in their own right. You don't want to miss the McCourty twins, Devin and Jason from the New England Patriots. We didn't have to tell you that part. And you will also learn how MHC pivoted in the past six months to address the COVID crisis and about their plans for the next 100 years. We have a lot of ground to cover tonight in just 40 minutes, so get comfortable, sit back, and enjoy. We all thank you for taking your precious time to support the Massachusetts Health Council. First up, I would like to welcome a former MHC honoree, Donna Latson Gittens, founder and CEO of More Advertising, with a very special message. Thank you so much, Maria. And thanks to WCVB TV for all their support. Hello, everyone. I'm Donna Latson Gittens, CEO of More Advertising the agency I founded in 1997. I'm proud to have been a former Massachusetts Health Council honoree and chair of this event. Tonight, it's an honor to be here to congratulate the 2020 Mass Health Council honorees. But first, let's congratulate the Mass Health Council for the 100 years of impressive activism, matching people and organizations to solve the challenging healthcare problems present here in the Commonwealth. For all the good that the Mass Health Council has been able to accomplish over the last century, we know there's still a long way to go. COVID-19 has exacerbated existing systemic problems. As a friend and supporter, I'm especially proud to help announce that the Council is recommitting itself to addressing and eliminating health disparities among people of color and low-income individuals and families. 
For far too long, the system has failed to prioritize the health and well-being of the communities of color. So I am also excited to stand with the Mass Health Council as it rededicates itself to advancing policies, initiating programs, and bringing together people with a vision towards promoting a commonwealth that is free of inequity and injustice. I'm happy for the opportunity to tell you all about this commitment to health equity and to share the stage, virtually of course, with so many amazing honorees. Thank you for joining us. We encourage you to visit the Council's website that's promoted here in the broadcast and signing up for the Mass Health Council's emails or making a donation of any size. Now, help me welcome the CEO of the Massachusetts Health Council and our host today, David Martin. Thank you, Donna. Hello, everyone. I'm David Martin, CEO of the Massachusetts Health Council. Welcome to our celebration of our 100th anniversary. We were, of course, supposed to be together in person at the Edward M. Kennedy Institute, enjoying great food from our healthcare chef teams and toasting our healthcare stars, our 2020 honorees. Instead, like everyone these days, we're meeting on a virtual platform. But thank you so much for joining us. We think you'll have a lot of fun because, well, it's not every day you get to celebrate 100 years of advocating better health for everyone with some historic rock stars in healthcare, sports, and government. I'm proud to lead the Mass Health Council. And as Donna just explained, I'm especially proud we are, we are recommitting the resources and leadership of the Health Council to addressing the continued and shameful existence of health inequities in our Commonwealth. We commit to doing what the Health Council was originally formed to do, convene our healthcare and civic leaders and create policies and programs that eliminate health disparities in communities of color. Because the terrible truth is we failed our coworkers, friends and neighbors among black, indigenous and communities of color. And our failures made all the more obvious during this pandemic because it reveals the injustice of our system. But we can do better and we will. The people that we honor today are examples of leaders who work to correct and improve the systems that are not working for everyone. Governor Deval Patrick and Diane Patrick, Michael Dukakis and Kitty Dukakis are leaders who work tirelessly to improve our lives and enable us to live in healthier communities. Jason McCourty and Devin McCourty are not only inspiring athletes, they're men who lead by example and show up when it matters, whether that is at a legislative hearing on education or a blood drive for sickle cell anemia. Our honorees this year come from across the healthcare spectrum, community health centers, hospitals, health plans, life sciences, government, and of course, the Red Sox. We know that all of them stand with us and share our vision of a commonwealth where everyone's health can thrive. Now in the past six months, the Mass Health Council has pivoted to help where we're needed, especially in underserved communities. From our Food Equals Gratitude project, providing thank you meals to frontline healthcare workers in nursing homes, health centers, and daycare centers, to our student video contest, addressing best practices to stay safe in this pandemic, to keeping aware of the mental health challenges during these unprecedented times of isolation, and helping organize and promote a blood drive in the African-American community to help sickle cell patients. Our most recent initiative on vaccine equity because it is vital that communities of color have access to and trust in the vaccine process. All of these projects with your help become more valuable in the weeks and months ahead. So thank you so much for your support. Now I'm proud to welcome to our 100th celebration two special gentlemen who are being honored tonight for their remarkable leadership on and off the field. And in particular, their fight against sickle cell anemia as well as pushing to address current inequities in healthcare for all black and brown citizens. Devin and Jason McCourty of the New England Patriots. Hey guys, congratulations. Thanks, David. Man, we appreciate this award to be recognized in the healthcare industry. I mean, that's huge for us, especially being we don't know much about healthcare, uh, but my wife is a doctor. So I think I have a little bit of a little bit of an edge than J Mac. And I took J Mac's trophy because I figured he couldn't really handle multiple championship things. Um, but anyway, uh, we just want to make sure we take time to thank um, all the selfless individuals who are out there uh, giving and sacrificing of their time, uh, energy. You've done a lot in, in the dictionary heroes defined uh, by someone who does a courageous act or has noble character. Um, and it's safe to say that you guys are the real heroes and we're just trying to be more like you each and every day. So thank you to Mass Health Council and to all of the people in healthcare around the country, especially in 2020. Yeah, there's not a lot of times I choose to agree with anything uh, that Dev says, but this will probably be one of those few times in our life that he's spot on about this. 
obviously everything other than multiple championships. But like he said, you guys are the rock stars. You guys are the heroes. You guys are the ones on the front line getting it done each and every day. And that's what it's all about. So Devin and myself are just tremendously, we're appreciative of what you guys are, have been doing and what you will continue to do. And as one of my friends always say to me, you guys are in the hall of fame of awesomeness. So just make sure you keep it up. Yeah, and it's so cool to think about this. Everyone praises the New England Patriots 20 plus years of just really excellence of winning championships and doing so many good things in the community. Um, but the Mass Health Council, 100 years, not just 100 years of existence, but 100 years of working uh, at a high level and leadership, showing people how it's done in healthcare. Uh, we just want to praise you and let you know that's a long time to be elite. Um, and we appreciate it. And we're trying to follow right in your footsteps. Yes, 100 years. Wow. I mean, that, that makes me feel young all over again. And uh, maybe, who knows, Dev, maybe you'll follow in the GOAT's footsteps and be able to log 20 years here. I don't know. I don't think you'll be able to last that long, but <laughs> I guess time will tell. Um, but hey, MHC has been doing some great work to just try to bring equality to everybody, trying to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to health care. And those disparities exist not only in our country, but right here in our city. And Devin and myself have been able to witness it firsthand as we've continued our fight and our work in the sickle cell disease arena. And uh, we do a ton of work right here. We've done a ton of work with Boston Medical Center, and we've seen the inequality that goes on with health care. So MHC, your, your initiative and the things you're doing is, being, is greatly appreciated and keep up the work. And we're excited to see where you guys can take it. Yeah, and what a joy it was this summer working with the great Reverend Liz Walker and the Red Cross uh, to put together a great blood drive to bring African-Americans out to donate blood and give. Like J-Mac just said, sickle cell really needs that blood. They need the blood transfusions. Predominantly, we need it from African-Americans to give for a disease that affects a lot of African-Americans. So we thoroughly enjoyed that this summer, putting that together uh, and bringing it right to the community in Boston to help make a difference. You guys work just to make sure you're distributing food and dropping it off, whether it was to frontline healthcare workers, whether it was to uh, the elderly. Uh, you guys have done so much in that area. And because of the pandemic, there's been such a shortage of food. And you guys have dropped it off to healthcare centers. Uh, you've been all over the community doing great things. And this year has shown us that food can be considered gratitude. And you guys continue to show up in every which way when it comes to that. Yeah, we want to thank the Mass Health Council Board for honoring us today for all of our off the field efforts. And like I always like to say, J Matt, Mama, Mama, we made it! First, a big thank you, Devin and Jason. And congratulations again on being recognized as healthcare stars. And now, hello, and congratulations to our 2020 honorees. We wish we were handing you your awards in person tonight, but look at this Brady Bunch setup that we have. This is great. We're deeply humbled by the work done by each of you. So first, I want to thank you for your tireless work in promoting good health in the Commonwealth. And then I'd love to go around this virtual table here so everyone gets to meet you. Your awards have all been delivered to each of you. Uh, and I, I want to take the, uh, the opportunity to tell our audience why you've been selected and then have you say hello. So first, Sandra Cotterell, CEO of Codman Square Community Health Center. Something important to know about Sandra, who has been at Codman for 25 years, the last nine years as CEO, is that she is a nurse. And we all know nurses get things done. Sandra has been called a quiet visionary, a leader that has not sought out the spotlight looking for credit, but one who works behind the scenes to bring people and organizations together to make things happen. Sandra, the virtual floor is yours. Uh, thanks, David. And congratulations to Mass Health Council on your 100th anniversary. I am honored to receive this beautiful award in recognition and graciously accept it on behalf of the Codman board and staff for the work that they do day in and day out to keep our community healthy. Congratulations to all of my fellow honorees. We're a strong network in Massachusetts and together we can continue to make a difference to improve and protect the health of our residents. Once again, thanks to the council, its members and board for this honor. Thank you so much. Back to you, David. Thank you, Sandra. Our next honoree is Robert Coughlin, the CEO of MassBio, our state's life science organization. Bob has been with MassBio for 13 years, and in that time, he has tripled the membership. 
Bob is also a longtime patient advocate, or as he likes to call himself, a dadvocate, which culminated with the recent approval of a breakthrough treatment for cystic fibrosis, giving him a renewed hope for the future of his son, Bobby, who was born with this life-threatening disease. Bob, we are so proud of your leadership of this vital industry in Massachusetts. Please say a few words. Hey, thank you so much, David, and, and thank you to you and the entire Mass Health Council team. Uh, your mission of promoting wellness here in the Commonwealth for all of its residents is truly remarkable. Massachusetts wouldn't be the best place in the world for the life sciences if it weren't for the partnership that we have with the Mass Health Council. And congratulations to all of the other stars being recognized tonight. Thank you for everything that you do for patients. And, you know, I want to accept this award on behalf of the 1300 member companies uh, of MassBio and, and all of their employees, because it's those employees that go to work each and every day to solve unmet medical need. And there's no better way to promote wellness than by solving unmet medical need and changing the course of disease. And in some cases, curing diseases. You heard how personal it is for me. And I'm grateful that my son now has a therapy and I wanna work diligently with this industry to ensure that every single patient receives what they need. And that leadership comes from the Mass Health Council. So thank you again and congratulate, congratulations on a hundred years of being awesome. Back to you, David. Thank you, Bob. Round of applause, great. <laughs> Thank you. Our next honoree, honoree is Tom Croswell. He is the president and CEO of Tufts Health Plan, and we are thrilled to honor him for his relentless commitment to high quality healthcare for all. Regardless of a person's age, income, employment, or health status, Tom is also a champion of diversity and inclusion, making it a strategic priority within Tufts Health Plan, which includes evolving hiring practices to ensure diversity, supporting supplier diversity, and the creation of culturally appropriate health programs for all members. As some of you may know, Tufts Health Plan and Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare are in the midst of combining organizations. And when that takes effect, Tom will lead the new entity as its CEO. Tom, congratulations. Hey, hello everyone. I'm really thrilled to be here with you all. Um, first, let me begin by offering my congratulations to the Mass Health Council on its centennial anniversary. That's 100 years committed to the health of the Commonwealth, really an outstanding achievement. I'd also like to congratulate the other honorees. I truly am humbled to be recognized with such an accomplished group. I'm here this afternoon representing nearly 3,000 colleagues from Tufts Health Plan who, like the Mass Health Council, dedicate themselves every day to support the health and wellness of our communities. I think if the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us anything, it's that none of us alone can do this work. It's with dedicated organizations like the Mass Health Council that we, all of us together, can succeed in fostering the culture of health and wellness for all of our communities. Thank you again for this honor and back to you, David. Thanks, Tom. Our next honoree is Manny Lopes, CEO of East Boston Neighborhood Health Center. One of the first things you should know about Manny is that just this year, his health center was named by Forbes magazine as one of America's best employers, which means not only does he serve the people of Boston, he does so while giving his employees a great place to work. Manny also led the East Boston Health Center in a first of its kind merger with the South End Community Health Center. And of course, he has led his health center in the midst of this terrible pandemic. And East Boston has been one of the most impacted communities by this virus. Manny, congratulations. Thank you, David, for the kind introduction. And thank you to the Mass Health Council, the Gala Planning Committee, and all who are involved in planning for this event. And congratulations to my fellow award recipients tonight. I'm humbled and honored to be a part of this amazing group of leaders. And as we know, our work as leaders in healthcare, public health, business, and beyond is more important now than ever. At East Boston Neighborhood Health Center, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. So tonight, I'm dedicating this award to past and present staff at EBNHC. They, like so many essential workers, are my heroes and healthcare stars. Speaking of anniversaries, congratulations to the Mass Health Council. You have led from the front for a century, and I can't see what's next for you. I can't wait to see what's next for you. And by the way, if you have any tips or pointers on how to handle the next five decades, please let me know. Thank you again for allowing me to be a small part 
of this incredible night. Back to you, David. Thank you so much, Manny. Next, Dr. Maricela Marrero is the president of Good Samaritan Medical Center in the great city of Brockton. She was formerly an emergency room physician at North Shore Medical Center for almost 10 years. She's an emergency room physician with an interest in developing top tier public healthcare knowledge within the Latino community and broadening the use of pro proper healthcare among Hispanic people. Originally from Puerto Rico, Maricela has been living in New England for the past 24 years, having attained her undergraduate degree from Yale and her medical degree from Harvard Medical School. Dr. Marrero, congratulations. Thank you so much, David, and thank you for this wonderful award. I really want to thank you, the Mass Health Council, for including me as an honoree among such a distinguished panel. Being a leader in a healthcare organization during this perilous pandemic has really taught me many lessons, and sometimes I found myself trying to find an answer. And I would read this quote that I love from Lincoln, which states, I know not how to aid you saving the assurance of one of mature age and much severe experience, that you cannot fail if you resolutely determine that you will not. I think that the biggest lesson I have gotten this year is that if we do things together, we can accomplish great things. And that's the work that the Mass Health Council does, and there's more work to be done. So thank you again, it's a true honor. Back to you, David. Thank you, Dr. Marrero. So perhaps the only person being honored here today that I know everyone else here knows is David Seltz. And that's because David is the executive director of the Mass Health Policy Commission, which is an entity that touches all of our respective organizations. We're very lucky that David runs the HPC because he's working every day to make our healthcare system the best in the country. Congratulations, David. Wow, uh, thank you, David. It is such an honor to be recognized uh, with this incredible award alongside such a distinguished and esteemed group of fellow honorees and, and friends. Um, you know, Massachusetts is a really special place for healthcare. And I'm just so proud to work at the HPC and to be a part of a community that is so committed to working together to advance our shared goals of better health, better care at a lower cost for all the residents of the Commonwealth. We've got a lot of challenges ahead of us and that's why the work of the Mass Health Council is as important today as it was 100 years ago. So here's to 100 years and to another great century. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. So our next amazing honoree is Kathy Wilson. Kathy was instrumental in the formation of the Behavioral Health Network in 1992 when four nonprofit mental health organizations formed the then new entity and appointed Kathy as CEO. BHN is the largest behavioral health provider in Western Mass. Kathy built the organization from a $1 million enterprise into the principal provider of mental health, substance abuse, and developmental disability services in the region. BHN now serves over 40,000 individuals in Western Mass. I also want you to know, Kathy was trained as a family therapist, which is good to know, given how much more time we're spending with our families these days. Kathy, congratulations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this honor. I wanna start by thanking the Massachusetts Health Council uh, and congratulate them for wonderful work over a hundred years. It's amazing. Um, I also wanna congratulate my other uh, honorees. Um, I feel like I'm very honored to be among this group of people. Um, you're all doing great work. And it's because of that, that we have incredible accomplishments in the, in the state, in Massachusetts, particularly Western Mass. It's a challenge sometimes. We don't have the same level of collaboration that you all have among you. I'm just meeting some of you for the first time, uh, but it's been wonderful to have the support of the incredible inspirational leadership that comes out of Boston. And I wanna thank all of you for your part in that and for allowing us to be a part of it as well. I'm accepting this award because on behalf of Behavioral Health Network, they as an entity have been phenomenal and have ensured that Western Mass gets the support and the excellent services needed for those most in need. I wanna thank my colleagues for that. 
And to the rest of you, congratulations. And I wish I were there being part of a wonderful event where we could talk personally, but I wanna say thank you and uh, be safe. Back to you, David. Thank you, Kathy. So our final awardee of the evening is the historic Boston Red Sox. Every year, the board, of, uh, the board of the Massachusetts Health Council selects an employer who has an exemplary workplace wellness program. And this year, it's our great honor to honor the Red Sox because having first been formed in 1901, the Red Sox are even older than the Massachusetts Health Council. <laughs> the Red Sox have a commitment to workplace wellness that extends far beyond their 40-man roster. Given the business they are in, the organization is focused on having a culture of wellness that touches all areas of the front office, field staff, and hundreds of seasoned employees that work games and events. This past baseball season was a great example of that with the extensive health and safety protocols that were put in place to keep everyone safe along with the rigorous testing and, and contract tra tracing process that was re required for everyone working at the park during the 2020 season. So here to accept the award on behalf of the organization is Amy Warrius, Chief Human Resources Officer. Amy? Thank you so much, David. On behalf of the whole Red Sox organization, I just want to thank the Mass Health Council for this recognition and congratulations to you on 100 years. At the Red Sox, we often say we're a family and that means we take the responsibility of caring for each other really seriously. And this pandemic has really tested that. And we've done some things that I'm really proud of us for. Uh, one of the things that we've done that I think is really special is that we have made sure that any employee or family member that has needed COVID testing has had it arranged by us the same day that they needed it. We also did testing for all employees that worked at Fenway Park on a regular and frequent basis. And we made sure there was a variety of wellness offerings that we provided to our employees, such as nutritional counseling and mental health support, which we all know is so important, as well as providing educational tools to our families who had children in school that we're challenged with the new school environment. We truly care about all of our employees. The health and well-being is forefront in our minds for them. And we just thank you for recognizing us and congratulations to all the other attendees here. Back to you, David. Thank you, Amy. All right. Big round of final applause for all of you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. We're thrilled to be able to honor all of you. Um, now, I just wanna take a moment to thank our supporters, donors, and sponsors please take note of all the sponsors whose logos ran at the top of this broadcast and will run again at the end. And we want to give a special shout out to our presenting sponsor, Novo Nordisk. And here to say a few words is Dr. Angela Fitch. Hello, I am Dr. Angela Fitch, Associate Director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Weight Center. And I want to wish a very happy 100 year anniversary to the Massachusetts Health Council. As a specialist in treating obesity, I am thrilled that one of the Massachusetts Health Council's main priorities is to address the obesity rate in the Commonwealth. Obesity is a treatable chronic disease that causes many other chronic health conditions. And as we have seen in the midst of this pandemic, leaves people vulnerable to disease outbreaks such as COVID-19. We see the effects of this vulnerability even more in communities of color. And that is why we want to focus our efforts on addressing the root causes of obesity. Treatment of the disease of obesity is about chemistry, not character. And so we are also working to eliminate bias and stigma and improve access to effective treatments. The Mass Health Council is one of the founding members of our recently created Massachusetts Coalition for Action on Obesity. And along with Novo Nordisk and our other partners, we will all work together to take action on obesity today for a better tomorrow. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. I'm Rick Burke, the co-founder and executive editor of STAT. I want to offer my hearty congratulations to the Massachusetts Health Council on your 100th anniversary. We are thrilled to be part of your celebration. We launched that in Boston five years ago with a mission to produce compelling news stories about health, medicine, and the life sciences. For me, five years has seemed like an eternity, but 100, now that's quite an accomplishment. We're so happy to be a media sponsor given the council's storied history from your work on the influenza pandemic of 1918 to right now with your COVID education program. STAT shares your priorities about informing the public about COVID-19 and our commitment to covering the racial inequities in healthcare. All the best to you from STAT for your next hundred years. 
All right, welcome back everyone. We are in a little bit of a different setting, but for a very special reason, and you're gonna see why in just a moment. And congratulations to all of the honorees. Let's go to the very big award of the night for the 100th anniversary of the Mass Health Council. To mark this achievement, the Massachusetts Health Council has selected two incredibly special couples. It's a big deal for their tireless efforts on behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth, and I don't say that lightly. Please welcome former governors and first ladies as the Mass Health Council's champions of the century, Governor Mike Dukakis, First Lady Kitty Dukakis, Governor Deval Patrick, and First Lady Diane Patrick. We are so pleased and honored to present you with this Champions of the Century Award on behalf of the Mass Health Council, and especially honored to spend a few moments with you, Kitty Dukakis, and, and you, Diane Patrick, and your husbands, of course. Well, thank you for letting them join us. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's our honor and pleasure to have all of you, for sure. Governor Dukakis, as a proud Greek American, uh, I would love to begin this discussion with you. Universal health care in Massachusetts truly began with your administration. Why did you tackle such a, a complex um, undertaking? This was very difficult and complicating, but you, you, you went full steam ahead and said, this is something that's very important. You really want to know? I do want to know. I was a failed pre-med. Oh, I love that answer. <laughs> I was a pretty good student. Had done well in high school. You were a very good student. Went to Swarthmore College. Kids. And since I had taken biology and chemistry in high school, I decided I'd start with physics. And I just couldn't get it. Got a charitable D. Was having a great time in political science and economics and history and decided to go in a different direction. But remember my family history. My dad was this young Greek immigrant who came to this country when he was 15 in 1912 and 12 years later, graduated from medical school and became a doctor and practiced okay. for over 50 years. So I grew up in that kind of a household. And uh, while he was very disappointed, <laughs> neither one of his sons became doctors. Um, we grew up in an atmosphere where making sure that everybody was cared for and got good health care was an important part of our life. And uh, I grew up with that. So that had a lot to do with, with my commitment to trying to make sure that everybody in this Commonwealth had decent and affordable health care. And you did it. And it was it was an incredible commitment yeah, that then, you paid off. <laughs> it took a while and a fellow named Romney was the guy that actually put the ball over the yeah. finish line. And then it was Duval who took it and made it work. All right, we're going to talk to, to, to Governor Patrick about that in just one second, but it is one of your, it is a proud accomplishment of yours, is it not, Governor Dukakis? It is, although frankly, what Kitty has done even exceeds that because. Oh, yep, she has. But she got deeply into the mental health issue, uh, as Diane has, and um, really has done remarkable work and continues to do it every day. It's and Kitty, really let's talk about that because I know firsthand I have a dear friend who was greatly influenced by your honesty and your bravery and was truly helped by what you did. And what you did at a time when people weren't doing that, you were honest, you helped reduce a stigma related to your depression and your addiction. And you stood right there in front of everybody and said, this is, this is who I am, and this is how I've tried to overcome these things. And you shared your personal struggles um, movingly and candidly in your book, um, Now You Know. And so much of what's being done today, you truly led the way on this. Let's talk a little bit about that. That was brave back then, and it's brave now. Well, I just, I was very fortunate. There were many, many, especially women who were needing help and we got people together and it was a go for them. It, it made a difference in their lives. And they tell their stories um, when we get together as a group. Um, and it's, it's pretty, pretty um, 
emotional for me to even to hear them over and over again. But let me say one thing, Maria. You know, people come up to me and they say, you know, Kitty was so courageous to do this. And uh, I say to them, look, uh, she doesn't think she was courageous. Uh, she was hit with this depression thing um, for 17 years. Nobody seemed to be able to do anything about it. And then finally, we found a treatment at a doctor who made all the difference. An extraordinary doctor, Charlie Welch, who has since retired, sadly. Um, and he made such a difference. He just heard every word I said and every other patient said. And but the fact that Kitty had her first ECT treatment and it worked right I away was pretty remarkable. And she sh shared that story now with really thousands of people and, and she's saving lives every day. I'm very, very proud of what she's done. You should be, and she is doing that. And, and thank you for that nod to, to Governor Patrick because we're now going to talk to Governor Patrick because Governor Dukakis, as you just said, he began all of this and Governor Romney did get it passed. But then you walk into office day one and they say, okay, implement it. And <laughs> it did. Well, we had a great team, Maria, and we had great forebears with vision, um, uh, with Mike leading the way. Um, and we had an advantage, I think, in the Commonwealth that uh, I, I've often said uh, publicly and to uh, former President uh, Obama, they just didn't have at the federal level. And that was a real spirit of collaboration. Because, you know, this broad coalition of policymakers and labor and business leaders and patient advocates, the medical community um, who came together to invent healthcare reform in Massachusetts stuck together right. um, as we were implementing it because there were so many other uh, decisions. David will remember this uh, as well. And there were a number of bills that we brought forward and that were passed because we kept refining, we kept learning, we kept trying to make it uh, stronger and, uh, and better and more lasting. And, and, and you, you did it in a way where it was, it was important just like to the, to the governor, not just because of his pre-med um, story, which was a great story that I, every single person would see because look what you went on to become. And I'll never forget the D part. Thank you for that. I'm, that I'm gonna tuck in because look, you've, you overcame it, but you, you all did this because it was important not to you as governors. It was important to you for the citizens of the Commonwealth to other people. Is that right, Governor Patrick? Yes, and I, I think there's a part of, there's another part of, uh, of Mike's story, which I think is very, very relevant. And that is, um, you know, the, the experience of his father coming to this country from Greece and in one, genera one generation producing um, this extraordinary uh, leader and advancing himself and his family, that's a deeply and uniquely American story. And the truth of the matter is that um, in, in his case, in mine, in many, many people's cases, government has a role to play in helping people help themselves, in keeping the, 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 the rungs of that ladder secure so that you're actually able to move up. And it turns out having access to affordable health care is one of those rungs. So it's not a substitute for you know, personal responsibility and grit and determination. Mm -hmm. But when you think about the importance of a great school, you think about the importance of intact and modern infrastructure, you think about the importance of affordable housing and safe um, uh, communities, all these things, uh, and I think about healthcare this same way, that stabilize people and enable them to put their ambition and their hard work and determination uh, to work to move themselves forward. So it was in that spirit of kind of um, enabling the American dream for me, and I think I can say uh, fairly um, uh, for Mike, that uh, that was and remains um, behind our commitment to uh, expanding access to affordable care. Beautiful way to put that, beautiful. And, and Diane, first of all, you need to tell me where you got those glasses because they are on point and fantastic and you look terrific. All of you look incredible, I don't know what, Fountain of youth are drinking from, but I would like to uh, to share that. 
Um, you fought just just as well as Kitty Dukakis. You fought the stigma in the public eye. You were honest about depression. You're a two-time cancer survivor, and you have witnessed healthcare here in Massachusetts in such a personal way, and you've shared that with us. Let's talk about that. Why was that important for you to do? Well, first, let me just uh, thank Kitty for her role in early on destigmatizing uh, mental illness. That was an important first step. And I have to say that I didn't set out to do any of that. I just happened to be in the public eye when, when both of those um, uh, experiences uh, came to be. I, soon after Duval was elected the first time, I had a very serious bout of clinical depression, something that I had suffered before, but had overcome. Uh, but I had to take uh, some time away, time away from my, my law practice, time away from my first lady role, uh, and, uh, and I was absent. And Duval explained that uh, with my permission uh, to the public about what, why I was not going to be around for a little while. Uh, and it, it wasn't voluntary. I didn't set out to, um, to be a role model. What happened was when I got back uh, to life, when I was feeling so much better with great healthcare in this, in this Commonwealth and great therapy from a wonderful therapist, uh, I was called upon to speak publicly about it. And I did with a lot of trepidation. After that, I received, and Kitty, I'm sure you did as well, so many calls, letters, emails from around the Commonwealth and around the country saying thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for speaking out because it allows me, you know, who is, you know, who's not in the public eye to finally admit to my parents, to my spouse, to my employers that I suffer this too. If you could do it, then I could too. And that continues to this day. Um, and so, Kitty, thank you. And uh, and and so, yes, I had a role in it, but it was a uh, it was a uh, fortuitous, I guess, serendipitous. I don't know, but um, but it mattered a lot to the people uh, in in the Commonwealth, and and I'm glad I had some role in that. You had a big role in it. You absolutely did. And you know, it's funny as someone who's in the news, you you report these things. And if you think that we're just saying them and not feeling them, you're wrong. We feel it. So when you bravely did that, and, and, and Kitty as well, you do that and you think about all the people in your life or you think about how it impacts all of these other people and you just think, wow, look, with the things you can't say in the news, yes, look at that bravery. Look at that. Yes, amazing. That's incredible. And I don't think either of you will ever realize what impact you truly had. Of course, your husbands, because they're visible and they're the governors of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. But for both of you to not, I guess, in quotes, play a role and just stand on the sidelines, boy, I, I can't tell you how much I admire you both and, and, and you all. All right. Now, you know that the Massachusetts Health Council and board and David recommitted uh, recommitting um, to leading the fight against so many things, racial inequities in healthcare. We know that's a big problem here and all throughout the nation. And, and you've all been involved in that as well. What can we do better right now in 2020 on that front? We'll start with you, Governor Dukakis. I don't want to be too political. Good idea. But the best thing we can do is get ourselves a new president who believes deeply in the principle that every single American should have decent and affordable health care and should not be working to destroy what was a very, very impressive effort under the Obama administration to reach that goal. And we've got less than a month to do it. November the 3rd happens to be my birthday. I know. And it better be a happy birthday, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I mean, for the United States of America, still not able to reach that goal of making decent, affordable health care av available to every single American is really a national embarrassment. And I hope it's going to change and fast. And Kitty, you, you agree? Absolutely. No, it just... 
it made it much easier for me because he was so outspoken um, to talk about this in, in public. And um, it worked. It just did. People kept coming up to me over and over again. Still happens. I mean, me. we get phone calls from people saying, uh, would Kitty be willing to talk to X? Uh, she's a little scared about this treatment. And uh, and, right. and would she, and Kitty? She does it. She does it. And Governor Patrick, and for you, Diane, what what can be done to, to, to move this this ball forward in the right way? Well, I, well I'll, I'll just start by saying uh, I don't think what Mike said is political at all. It's a, it's a fact that we need leadership that actually cares about um, making this basic human right available to every citizen. And frankly, that comes from a place of understanding that we, we have a stake in each other. We belong to each other as citizens of a national uh, uh, community. So that is number one. And number two is we've got to acknowledge, um, frankly, what has become impossible to acknowledge um, thanks to COVID-19, which is there's a lot of unfinished business here in this country. And assuring true equity, uh, assuring that um, uh, the playing field really is level means dealing with the ways in which institutionally and out of a, you know, a long course of bad habits and misunderstandings or lack of understanding, we have allowed people to suffer and kind of accept that that's just the way it is. Um, in America, you know, we ought to be about changing and shaping our own future and our own uh, reality. And I think uh, so acknowledging that we have disparities, training in order to surmount those uh, disparities with intention uh, is going to be key. And of course, we're going to have to build more capacity, human capacity in particular, doctors and others, other uh, medical uh, professionals, so that there is the right um, talent ready to deal um, with, uh, with truly universal uh, care. And, and for you, um Diane? Well, I'll just add to all of that. And that is, um, we need to also break down the barriers to access to healthcare. And that means bringing, bringing healthcare to communities that are underserved, um, allowing, breaking down the fears that immigrants have uh, to get, for instance, COVID testing. Um, they're afraid they're gonna be deported in this uh, political environment. Uh, language barriers and the like. It's, it's, it's wonderful to have uh, universal health care coverage, but if there's no access, it doesn't matter. And so we need to think about what keeps uh, generally communities of color from accessing um, excellent health care. And there are so many uh, uh, walls that we need to tear down. Well, you are champions of the century for a reason. And all of those words you just shared with us, those are the reasons right there. I can't thank you enough. Congratulations to, to all of you. It's, it's just been such an honor and a pleasure and such a wonderful discussion. And it, it just makes, I think, all of us feel so optimistic uh, about what could be done and about our future. Thank our you thanks, all. Our thanks to the Massachusetts Health Council and to David and all of his team. It's a huge honor for all of us. And don't forget the 3rd of November. Yes, indeed. Happy birthday, Governor Dukakis. <laughs> well, what a celebration this has been. Thank you so much to all of you who tuned in. We hope you stay involved with the Mass Health Council to have a say in how our health care is delivered and how we make it through this COVID-19 era and prepare for challenges in the future together. Congratulations to the honorees, the McCourty twins, and two amazing first couples, Michael and Kitty Dukakis, and Duvall and Diane Patrick for being named champions of the century. And a final thanks to everyone who makes a nonprofit organization like the Health Council hum all year long. The Board of, the dire of Directors, the 100th Gala Committee, the staff, our sponsors and donors, big and small. And thanks to Malcolm Media, Clapazola Partners, the great Marjorie and Chris, and for my team here at WCVB Channel 5, as always, for making 
all of this happen. Please check out the MHC website and help them meet their goals because they are your goals and ours as well. Happy 100th anniversary, Mass Health Council, and to all, have a wonderful night.